Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Mundy. I'm a licensed professional land surveyor here in the state of California. And um, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about really what a surveyor is and, and how we kind of correlate between um, GIS as well as a few other disciplines um, and kind of where we, we overlap between the two. So, um, you know, surveying, we're Gosh, we've had over 130 years of licensure in uh, the state of California, and, and believe it or not, we were one of the, or we were the first uh, design professional to be licensed in the state of California in 1891, far before engineers, um, far before, um, you know, architects or anything like that. But believe it or not, in the state of California, we've only licensed about 9,600 uh, surveyors in that 130 year period and approximately 2200 the number varies depending upon who you talk to uh, but let's just say between 2000 and 3000 are actually active and practicing in the state um, the role of us as surveyors is really clearly defined in the uh, california business and professions code section 8726 uh, this is also known as the land surveyors act and what we're, we're here to do primarily is to protect the public in regards to boundary rights and property ownership. Um, you know, we're not here to try and tell somebody that they can't do something um, on their own property or, or those types of things or determine who owns what. Uh, we are simply here to state the facts as an unbiased um, professional. And the Business and Professions Code in Section 8726 breaks down the different areas of surveying that we have responsibility for. Uh, the first, I've kind of put these into uh, the language into bullet points as it comes from the state in the law, but then underneath that you'll see the generic terms that we use as surveyors to basically describe these different areas of practice. And you know, we deal with things from construction staking and as-built surveys to topographic surveys, you know, determining uh, the contour and, and uh, of the earth, uh, as well as determining boundary lines and also taking those boundary lines and figuring out if somebody can then subdivide their property even further, whether it's as a inheritance for their their children or for uh, benefit of maybe profiting from owning a large uh, portion of land. Uh, you know, we're, we're the ones that are responsible for that. And uh, the pictures that you'll see off to the side of my slides, they are kind of, um, they're pictures that friends, other surveyors have sent me of different setups and different places they've been. Um, I don't know where all of them are, uh, but, you know, as surveyors, we have a really interesting job in the fact that we do get an opportunity to go outside quite a bit. But then there's a, also a large chunk of our job that is done inside in the office. Uh, besides the previous listed um, responsibilities, we're also in charge of filing some sort of map uh, in regards to the surveys that we perform. These are normally called records of survey or corner records. Uh, we are also responsible for setting up control networks, things that are used for additional services and, and have additional opportunities to be used uh, with other responsible people, other professionals uh, in other roles. Uh, we also take care of writing legal descriptions, things for easements or vacations of streets or uh, real property itself. Uh, we're the ones that are involved and, and take care of writing those descriptions, um, utilizing a number of different resources that we have available to us, and then uh, actually stamping and signing those. Uh, we are legitimately the only profession that is allowed to render a statement about uh, an accuracy of a map or measured survey data. Now, how do we play into what GIS has to offer? For a land surveyor, GIS, it's a really important tool for us. Um, it allows us to use, uh, use it to, to plan a path of least resistance for things like searching for historical survey monuments. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to compile um, historical land records in one easy place, uh, one, one repository. Um, you know, 
such as a street intersection, a parcel of land, things like that. We can find that easily using uh, a GIS uh, platform. Some of the other things that we use it for are, of course, with our land planning and, and um, you know, our subdivision maps and things of that nature, uh, using that to get uh, the zoning of a property or um, the rough acreage or square footage of a property is definitely something that we use GIS for. Uh, we also use it for project management. Uh, I've used it in the past on projects where uh, we had a, a 60 page record of survey with over 300 historical land or survey monuments that we needed to search for. And how do I, how do I tell a field crew where they're going today versus tomorrow? Or how do I relay that information to multiple field crews? Well, we were using uh, ArcGIS online and we were using Survey123 as a companion to that. And they were documenting uh, photographs of historic monuments that they were finding, as well as providing the descriptions of those monuments. And that was available to our field crews on their phones um, and would update live for them in order to understand what monuments still needed to be searched for, what monuments had been found, and what monuments were destroyed. So it was a, a really nice way for us to be able to keep everything together and not only keep our field crews informed, but also our client. Uh, the project was for the Port of Long Beach specifically. And instead of, I, instead of having them call me uh, once a week and say, hey, how are we doing on this project? Uh, I was able to provide them the link and they were able to log on anytime they would like and see the progress of their uh, project. Um, we're trying to implement something similar here at the County of Los Angeles for uh, the survey department. Uh, it's still in its infancy stages, but the idea is, is to provide some sort of repository of historic survey monuments and, and perpetuate those monuments throughout the years. So GIS plays a huge role in, in what we're able to do and, and how we're able to do it in an efficient manner. So we get asked questions all the time. And, and I think lately uh, with the current, the current environment, there's, there's a few things that have come up recently that I think have, have brought these questions to light again. And um, I would imagine that if you're a GIS professional, you're probably saying, well, gosh, does, um, does 8726 mean that only surveyors can create GIS data? And if you take the literal, literal interpretation of the law, it's yes if the boundary location is to be determined, or if you're determining the location of fixed works, or when the maps are being used for engineering purposes and construction um, that determines where the location of those fixed works or built, built features are gonna go. The answer is no, if the location is merely uh, for reference or as a graphical representation of what is happening. Uh, when maps are used for planning, preliminary design, you know, facilities management, uh, a graphical representation means the answer is pretty much anybody can do it. And to kind of add into this, as a surveyor, uh, I think it's important to kind of reiterate to, to everybody that we're not coming for anybody's job at all. Uh, as surveyors, we have a we have we have enough to do, uh, and it's not to speak down on on anybody else. Uh, we have a lot of areas of focus, and we, at least my generation of surveyors, uh, professionals, we look at GIS as a tool that is incredibly important and and very powerful uh, to the future of what we're able to do. So we're not gunning for your jobs. We're not trying to uh, we're not trying to take anything away from anybody. Uh, we just our our primary concern, of course, is is protecting the public. And I think we can all agree that um, we've had at least one person come in with an assessor's map showing us where their boundary lines are supposed to be, or that their lot says it's 100 feet on the assessor's map, but on a, a parcel map or a track map or a record of survey, uh, it says it's 99.9 feet. And why am I missing 0 0.01 feet? And you know, uh, the general public doesn't quite understand 
the varying difference between uh, you know, an assessor's map, a GIS uh, uh, system, as well as what a, a field survey provides. So with that, you know, I just, I wanna make sure that everybody understands that this is not a, a come out and tell you what you can't do. It's the encouragement of, you know, finding somebody that is licensed that can help you and, and, and provide you with what you need in order to do your job. Now, how can we help each other? Well, I've always thought that GIS and land surveying are complementary, kind of like apples to the apple pie. Um, you know, you can't make one without the other. And I think that one of the things that as a GIS professional, I would ask uh, you to do if, if that is your job, is to concentrate and focus on the accuracy and the precision of the data that you are providing within your GIS database. And if that accuracy isn't there, then, you know, really how can you make it better is the question. Uh, I think that a need to access data quickly and efficiently and uh, an ability to manipulate the data quickly is something that I feel is very important as a surveyor. I wanna be able to have everything at my fingertips and be able to answer any questions that may come up while I'm both in the field and in the office. And as a surveyor, I think we can do a better job of providing the metadata that's, that, that needs to be included to help populate a, a GIS database. And that would include, you know, a locational accuracy of the data that we are finding or that we are, are providing, uh, a date uh, that the data was captured, the source documents that we're using for that in order for there to be reference, and also the methods of compilation. And the reason I get into that is because there are a variety of different ways for surveyors to collect data from simply using a cell phone with GPS technology, all the way up to the GPS units that you see us out in the field with all the time. I will speak up and say there is no such thing as survey grade GPS. It's a marketing term uh, that is, is used. GPS is GPS. So there is a, a variation in the accuracy of uh, California real-time network data or RTK data, real-time kinematic data versus static GPS data. Um, and that is something that needs to be understood. On top of that, we live in a state that is constantly moving. Uh, we are sandwiched between the Pacific plate and the, uh, the Northwest plate um, in, in the United States. And believe it or not, over the past 26 years, the state of California, uh, the Pacific plate has shifted uh, over three feet. Uh, so, so let that soak in. And that's the, the separation is the San Andreas Fault, which runs through LA County. So depending upon where you are in the county, that point that you measured 26 years ago, potentially, or is three feet different today than it was 26 years ago. So we really need to be focused on where did the data come from? When was it provided to us? And what datum is that data on? So the way that I look at this is a, a, an approach that I like to call the toothpick approach. Um, the best way to think about it is like a sandwich. When you stack all the layers of a sandwich together, the, the bread, the meat, the cheese, the lettuce, the tomatoes, whatever you like to put on your sandwich, when you put a toothpick, which in this regard would be a survey control point in the middle of that sandwich, the layers are very difficult to, to shift and move apart. If you take the toothpick out, it's very easy for you know, a, a piece of that sandwich to move. So I would encourage as we move forward to think about ways that you can constrain your data that you use in your GIS database. Uh, the other way to look at this is what I call the knot in the net approach. You know, the, the knots in the net keep everything together. They keep the net functional. Whereas if the knots were taken out or the knots break, there's all of a sudden a hole and things can slip through. So when you're thinking about what you're gonna be providing, especially if you do work for an agency or uh, somewhere where the data that you're providing on your GIS um, is available to the public, it's very important to think about 
the toothpicks that you want to put in that system and how you want to constrain that system. And it should be an overall global idea, not just an idea for a place where it's a large populated area um, because it does affect the entire system as a whole. So with that, I, I just, for me, I, I really am looking forward to the next few years and seeing how we can continue to use GIS as a way to um, improve surveying and improve the profession. And uh, I hope that the relationship, uh, it, it goes both ways and, and that uh, some GIS professionals are also rather excited about the group of surveyors that are coming in now that are getting licensed that have seen the light and seen what GIS has to offer to us. Uh, and with that, uh, this photo, by the way, is one that I took. Um, if you don't know this, this is Washington's Point. It's also known as the initial point for the San Bernardino Basin Meridian. And you can actually hike up to this point. Um, and what's really cool about it is that when you go up there, um, there's a huge cluster of uh, lead tack and tags or survey monuments. And it's kind of traditional that um, if you are licensed, you take a tag up there and you put it at Washington's Monument. Um, and evidently don't file a corner record like you should. So uh, my tags up there, it was, it's actually the only place uh, in the world that has my tag. Um, I, I haven't said any other ones, but um, I've had the opportunity to hike up there and it's, it's wonderful. The, be, the views up there are great and it's a fun little hike. It's, it's only maybe four miles round trip. So with that, I'll, I'll close. And if anybody has any questions or anything, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and I, I really appreciate the time and allowing me to come speak about surveying.